Hi, I'm Daniel Souza and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is part 3 on lecture on permutations and combinations. In part 1 and 2, we had a friend who came and gave us a couple of blocks of wood and asked us to find all the possible ways we could arrange them, with new conditions every time. This time the condition is a little weird. Let's find out what he's asking for. Alright, so now your friend comes and gives you another A and tells you, OK, now you, I've given you three A's, a B, a C, a D and an E. Find out all the possible ways you could arrange them. Before he leaves, you're like, wait up. Is there any other condition that you want me to fulfill? And he's like, ah, good thing you reminded me. I want C and D to be together, always, in all your arrangements. Then you pause for a moment and you really question your friendship with him. You ask him why. And he says, I don't know, just do it. Now at this point, if you've never learned of permutations and combinations before, finding out all the arrangements with two duplicate A's and C and D have to be next to each other might seem like something that's impossible to do. But it's not. It's actually really, really simple. It all comes back to the logic with which we understood how to count unique items. All right, let's find out how to solve this problem and a way to never talk to your friend again. All right, with the new conditions now, um, having something like C, A, 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 B, D, E will not work because your friend specifically said that you need to have C and D together, right? So to fix this and to understand how to do this, let us do a simple thing, right? Let's take a big box and we'll put C and D inside the box, right? And we'll close it. So now, Let's look at this box as one unique block, right? So now you don't have seven things, you have six things, out of which one is a box, correct? Now, you already know that if you have um, unique terms, you can just use the factorial, correct? So if you've watched the first two videos, this calculation will now make sense to you, right? Six factorial divided by three factorial, right? Six factorial because you have six unique terms, but divided by 3 factorial because you know that you have 3 a's, correct? Now, this will be 120, right? 6 into 5 into 4 and 3 factorial gets cut. Now, why is 120 the right answer? Because if you move the box C and D, right? Wherever you move the box to, it contains C and D together. So you'll never have an arrangement like C, A, 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 B, D, E because C and D are inside the box. So wherever the box goes, is where C and D is, right? So C and D could be at the start, it could be at the end, it could be in the middle. But wherever it is, it's together. So your friend comes back now and, he's, and he asks you, have you figured it out? And you're like, yes, it's 120. And he's like, I don't think so. And then you realize that you forgot to take into consideration that things in the box could also be shifted, correct? Like C and D could also be D and C. So you didn't factor in that extra arrangement every single time, right? So for this arrangement specifically, you could have A, 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 B, D, C, E, right? If you just switch the things inside the box. So now what you're going to do is you're going to change the formula a little bit and you're just going to multiply this by how many things are in the box? Two. They're unique things. And how many ways can you arrange two unique things? Two factorial, right? So 20, 120 into two factorial, that's two. So 120 into two is 240. Get that. 240. And this is the right answer. Now, once again, let's recap how we got 240, right? You have seven things out of which three things are duplicates, right? You have three A's and you have a condition where C and D have to be together. So what you're going to do is first things first, put C and D together. Let's take care of that condition first because that's C, that is the most complex one, right? So C and D will take it together. We'll treat it as one unique thing, right? So now you have six unique things. So six unique things is six factorial. Now take care of the duplicate terms. So duplicate terms are three factorial because you have three A's. So six factorial by three factorial is 120. Now we'll take care of the arrangements inside this box, right? So C and D are two unique terms, which can be arranged two factorial ways. So that's 120 into two factorial, which is 120 into two, it is 240. Okay, this should now be clear to you. If it isn't, watch all the three videos again, write this thing down till it makes sense. If you get these three concepts, you'll be able to solve any problem in permutations and combinations. Trust me, it all breaks down to these three concepts. How to find out unique things, right? Arrangements of unique items. How to find out arrangements when you have duplicate items. And how to find out arrangements when you have conditions, right? Now, an example problem like this could be find all the ways you can arrange letters in a word such that you always have the vowels together, right? Then what you're going to do, you're going to put all the vowels in a box and treat that as one single entity. All right, now before I end this video, here's another thing that you should think about, right? Now, remember that we consider this as one term, correct? 
because of the condition c and d have to be next to each other now knowing your friend he may also have said that c and d have to be next to each other and c has to be before d now remember that this box is how we got six correct one two three four five and six but we multiplied this only because we could switch terms inside the box so suppose he said that um, c and d have to be together but c always has to come before d then you know you don't have to multiply this number right you don't have to multiply it into two factorial because you don't have the flexibility to switch anything inside then your answer would be 120 right so problems could also come where you have two vowels in and they always say that the vowel a will come before the vowel e right all right so whenever you get conditions like these make sure you understand them correctly because you can always be sure that there will be the other answer in the options all right so this is part three on the lecture on permutations and combinations now you may be wondering where are all the formulas where is npr where is ncr where is n factorial th th things like that right they'll all become all in good time all in good time this is the best way to understand permutations and combinations i i learned it this way and it's really an effective way to really understand it so that you never forget it and you don't have to memorize any formulas. In part four, we'll actually start solving some problems, right? And you'll actually see how to apply these formulas. If you found anything confusing in this video, make sure you leave me a comment so that I know whether the pace of the video is too fast, right? If it is, I'll slow it down and we can have another video where I explain this. If not, part four is where we actually so start solving problems. All right, so I'll see you in part four. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. And as always, spread the knowledge.